Well, I know who Jesus is. <coughs> That's yes. right. It's yes. amazing because even though even though I, I that's coming back to me, I remember when when he was giving me to find out how depressed he thought I was because of my Vietnam background. I started thinking about different things and tests and exams and things he was giving me and he was asking me about my past life and everything else. And the Lord convicted me of something last night while I laid in bed. That's why this thing has really hit me. While I laid in bed at night, the Lord said, the Lord came to me and says, it was nobody but the power of Jesus that got you through that. He says, why didn't you tell him about me? And I got convicted because while I was there talking to this psychiatrist about my background in Vietnam, I'm telling him all these different things and, you know, and all, all my professional background, I'm this, I'm that, and all of And they said, but what about me? And I realized, you know, it was nobody but Jesus. That's right. He said, oh, yes, you was broken, but Jesus brought me through. And well, I can't wait to get back to him now. I, I can't wait to get back and talk to this man. I, got, I have an appointment coming up. And I'm excited now because I'm, I, got, I got something I got to tell him. Amen. I got something I got to tell him. I got to forget about this exam about do you do this and do you do that and how do you do this. And, no, it's nobody but Jesus. Amen. That's right. That's right. Got so to say, I got something to say, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, beforehand, I wasn't looking forward to going back and talking to him. I did not want to talk to him because he was saying, telling me how broken I was and this and that and don't be ashamed because you're broken because you'll be healed. It's going to be no. I am healed. Been healed. I am healed. Been healed. I'm not going to take that anymore. And I just realized I got to tell this man that. <laughs> yes, sir. So I'm excited about going back and see him now. Before I was thinking about me, yeah. but now I got to think about Jesus. That's where it came from. Woo! I can't walk away like that. I'm gonna be obedient to His word. I'm gonna be obedient to His word. That's amazing. Because even that song talked about His obedience, and my message today is obedience brings blessings. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what I want to talk about today. A little bit about obedience brings blessings. So there's been a lot of things that's been happening this morning that's just confirmed everything that Jesus, was, that the Lord's been telling me this morning. I got up this morning, the first thing that happened when I was downstairs reading and going over my message, so I'm not going to be long today because I know there's a lot of stuff going on and I, I, I just want to give you a word that we're going we're gonna to go on out and we're going to sell. In fact, we, got, we still got the auction, right? We have an auction that we go auction all this cakes and stuff off. And they said, I got to be the auctioneer. I said, okay, fine, I'll, I'll be there. And I'm going to do some auctioning. <laughs> I'll buy more than an auction. <laughs> no one made. But my nephew called me this morning. Early this morning. Now, y'all may not remember him, but my mother Nick was passed away. He was here. And he's the one that got up and made the comments and was talking and slurring a little bit. You know, he thought he might have been a little bit drinking a little bit. I don't know what he was. Uh, I'm saying he might have had a couple of drinks or something. But y'all know who he was. He was talking about Grandma and... Talking about the Auntie Mommy and Uncle Daddy and all, all this kind of stuff. Well, he called me bright and early this morning. And he says, Uncle Wendell, didn't even call me Uncle Daddy, he called me Uncle Wendell this morning. He says, I got up this morning, Uncle Wendell, and I was laying there in my bed, he says, and I just couldn't sleep. He said, but the Holy Spirit kept telling me to give Uncle Wendell a call this morning. Give Uncle Wendell a call this morning. He said, I didn't want to do it. He said, I didn't want to do it. He said, because I was laying in bed and I was resting. He said, and I know Uncle Wendell getting ready to go to church. And I know Uncle Wendell going to be sharp because Uncle Wendell's always sharp. Uncle Wendell's just, he said, but I didn't want to call. He said, but I had to be obedient. Even in his walk, he says, I have to be obedient. He says, so Uncle Wendell, I'm calling you this morning to tell you how much I love you and how much I care for you. I want to thank you and Uncle uh, Auntie Mommy for what you have done. And, he just went on and on and on, and I said, I said, Tim, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. But I'm you understand. I'm going to talk to you some more. I'm going to tell you about how much I love. I appreciated that. Because not only did he want to tell me that, but he was being obedient to what the Lord of God told him. Now, isn't that great to be obedient? Yes. yes. Now, there have been times when people say things to me that's not obedient. There's a lady that we know we've known for quite a while. It's amazing. 
Her husband had passed away. And she came to us. In fact, she called us on the phone not long ago. A few months, three months, four months ago. And she says, I just got all of his insurance and all of his money just came in. And she said, I was trying to figure out where was I going to do with all this money. She said, I got to tithe to somebody, and I, and I know I'm not going to church anywhere. Lord, where do I tithe this money? And the Lord says, send it back to your mom and thought burden in family life ministries. And she says, yes, Lord. So she gets on the phone and she calls us. And she says, uh, Holy Spirit told me that I have to call you all. And tell you all that the money from my husband's retirement, I have to tithe it to Family Life Ministries. Mm -hmm. My honey said, well, thank you so much. I said, well, praise God. Lord, to answer my prayers, I got some financial problems we need to take care of. That's going to help us out a lot. That's been quite a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Being obedient to God's word. Sometimes we have to be careful of what we say. Because she spoke those things out of her mouth. She spoke those things out of our mouth. Obedience. We have to be careful. As Isaiah 119 says, if you are real, not if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you're willing and being obedient, you'll reap the good of the land. Mm -hmm. But I want to take you to another scripture. I want to take you to Deuteronomy, the eleventh chapter, the twenty first, the twenty seventh verse. And then I'm going to take you to the 28th, because there's some things I want to tell you there before I really get into my message. Let's go to Deuteronomy 11, 27. Everybody got that in your Bible? Got to have, got to have a word. Because blessings will come upon you when you're obedient to what God's word is. You know, this is Memorial Day weekend. I think this is very important. Why? Because me being in the military, one thing that I learned to do was to be obedient. Uncle Sam, not only Uncle Sam, but I want you to be obedient. He demands that you be obedient. So I've learned that. And so when I joined the military and I understood that I had to be obedient, I had no problems with being obedient because my daddy taught me how to be obedient. When my father spoke and says, Wendell, I want this done, I learned that I better do it because if I didn't do it, there was a consequence that I didn't want to face. Now you all thought we talked about that before. My dad was a big man. My dad was great, big left-handed guy. And when he gave orders, you listened to his orders and you did what, you, what had to be done. So I was very obedient to my father. So when I joined the military, I had no problem. When they gave me orders, I obeyed them. The problem we're having today is that fathers aren't giving directions to their children and then holding them to it. They have, too often they have too much back talk. Too many times they have things they want to say back to their father. Man, there was nothing I would ever say back to my father. If my father says, Wendell, I want you to jump, the only question that I had was, Dad, how high do you want me to jump? <laughs> but today, they would be saying something like, I don't know, Dad, why do you want me to jump? Why do you want me to jump? And where do you want me to jump to? What do you want me to do? No, I, I didn't ask that kind of a question. So we have to be careful of what we do. We've got to learn to be obedient. So the scripture says in 27, 11, chapter 11, verse 27, the blessings if you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I command you today, and the curse if you do not obey the commands of the Lord, your God, but turn aside from the way that I am commanding you today to go after other gods. Let me go back and read that again. That's not coming across right. Let's go back to 27. Let's start at 26. See, I am setting before you today blessing and curses. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way that I am commanding you today to go after other gods that you have not known. So those things we've got to be careful of. So when God tells us to do something, we've got to be able to do those things. Let's go to number 28, uh, uh, chapter 28. Go to chapter 28. Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. I want to go there. I'll start with chapter uh, 
28, verse number 2. I'm going to go to 2 to 7. And it's talking about being obedience to God. These are the things that happen to you if you're being obedient to God. Everybody got Deuteronomy 2? Amen. Very good. Let's read this. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruits of your womb and the fruit of the ground and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. That's if you're obedient. Isn't that an amazing thing how great it is when you're obedient? When I was obedient to my father, there was no limit to what my father wouldn't do for me. Because I was obedient. I think about my son Terrence. I know how what it was with him. When I told my son to do something, it was great that I knew that he was going to do it. And because of him, he reaped a lot of benefits. He reaped a lot of benefits. So if you're going to thrive in this coming year, the one prerequisite of everything that you want, everything that you desire, is that you have to be obedient. If the Word of God comes to you for something, you've got to be obedient. The Holy Spirit can bring forth a Word, but it is up to you to grab hold to it, for if it's going to be manifested in your life, it's going to be because you're being obedient to what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. Bob with us today, we hear the Word, it, it, it says a lot of us come to church every day and we hear the word every day. And this every Sunday. It's good to hear the word because hearing the word is fantastic. It talks about how great it is to hear the word. But what good is if you hear the word and then obey, don't obey what it says? Amen. Yes. It doesn't mean a thing. The Bible says in John 3, 6, in Amplified verse, it says that, For God so loved the world, and he dearly prized the world, that he even gave his only begotten unique son, so that whoever believed in him, trusted in him, claims to, relies on him, shall not perish, mm -hmm, that means come to destruction, but have eternal, everlasting life. Oh, that's a powerful thing. Because he said he loved us just that much. I know how I love my son. And if God loves, loves you more than I love my son, what is the limit that God's got for you? Amen. I don't know what the limit would be. God loves us more than we could ever imagine. Yes. I think of how much I, I love my son Terrence and how God loves me even more so than that. But even though I love my son, there was times when I had to chastise him. There are sometimes as much as... And I just remember my mom and dad used to tell me this sometimes. Son, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Yes. And then they laid me over across that bed and says, and I don't whip pants because pants are expensive. Drop your britches. <laughs> Okay. And I'd have to drop my britches. And then I'd get my whipping. And then he would say, because I don't, pants are too expensive. Your bottom can heal. <laughs> so they chastise us. You know, sometimes when God tells us to do things and we're disobedient to his word, do you know God chastises us the same way? God has the same concern for us. But one thing about God, he's patient. He tells us again and again what we ought to do. He wants us to listen to him because he loves us. Hebrews 12, 6 says, For whom the, lo the Lord loveth, he chastises. He chastises. If you persist in your own ways, he withholds privileges and blessings from you. He does so because he wants to mature us. Sometimes God's got to hold things back because we learn something from it. Sometimes I don't like the lessons that I learned. I didn't like the lessons my daddy taught me sometimes. But I learned from them. The same things that I talk about today. My lifestyle. The things that I do. Those things when I heard them from my daddy when I was a young boy. I did not agree with them. I thought that was the worst thing my daddy would say to me. Son you got to do this. Son you got to. I didn't want to do those things. But you know what? I've learned being obedient. That there's benefits. Amen. I've learned that there's great benefits in doing what God loves us, wants us to do. If God freely gave us his only begotten son, Jesus, surely he won't withhold anything we need. He wants to bless us radically, outrageously, and abundantly. Psalm 35, 20, uh, 27 says, Let the Lord be magnified, and who has pleasure in prosperity of his servants. 
And we are his servant. We're not only his servant, but we're his child. Amen. And if we're a child of the king, there is nothing he wants to hold back from us. Mm -hmm. Said he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Yes. He don't even count the cattle. He counts the hills. Mm -hmm. And all of these things belong to us. Because what? Because we are his children. Yes. There's nothing that I have that I don't have for my son. There's nothing that God doesn't have that he doesn't have for us. Amen. But there is a prerequisite. Amen. There is a prerequisite. I have to be obedient to God's word. When my son is disobedient to me, some of these things we have to hold back. He says, no. Nah, right. If you can't be obedient, that means I can't trust you with everything. Amen. Amen. If I, you're not going to be obedient, I can't trust you with this. I can't trust you with that. So the more obedient I am, the more God wants to give us. That's what I'm a big believer in. So if God freely gave to his son, he wants to do the same thing for us. Luke 12, 32 says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's us. We're a little flock. And he wants to give us the full kingdom. Yes. What's in the kingdom, guys? Mm. What's in the kingdom? He has it all for us. Before he had him fill in the garden of Eden, <laughs> it was full of blessings. It was a place full of health, abundance, and joy. After Adam's sin and mankind fell from grace came the curse. The blood of Jesus, however, is the key to the power and the blessings of the Bible because through his shed blood, we have the ability to obey the voice of God. Amen. In Corinthians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. People who will often misunderstand the curse to mean that now there's no restrictions. They think that, hey, I can do what I want to do. I can say what I want to say. I can act like I want to act because I've been redeemed from the law. <laughs> I, was, I was counseling an individual. It's been quite a while ago. It's amazing that they would ever come to me for counseling. And he said he was having a lot of trouble with the woman that he was living with. And he wasn't even married to her. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, as far as the word says, that's fornication. And fornication is not something that God enjoys, that, that God wants any parts of. First Corinthians 6, 9 says, fornication uh, will not, the for, fornicators will not inherit the kingdom, which is righteous and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So it will not, that's not going to work for you. So if you come and try to find some way to get past the curse and all of these things, that, that doesn't give you the right to live in sin. It don't work. So if you're sleeping with someone who does not have a ring on their finger <laughs> from making the marriage covenant of the vows before God, you're living in sin. And are being disobedient before God. You are still being disobedient before God. How can you sit back and think you're going to receive all the blessings that God has for you living a lifestyle like that? As Christians, we are to be free from the curse of the law. Does not mean that we are free from living a moral life, a godly life. There are some things Christians are not supposed to do. And as a Christian, you've got to know that. And when you realize those things, there's a blessing that will come upon you. Everything that God has for you is a blessing. Obedience brings blessings. You know what's right and what's wrong. So if you do see it, you can come before God and ask Him for forgiveness. But you can't say, and by the way, God, forgive me because I'm going to go back and do it again tomorrow. Because it just don't work. You can't do nothing like that. Forgiveness comes when you repent and truly want to live a life of Christ. Amen. When you change your life and you want to live a life of Christ, that's when things will change. Just because you feel, well, I've been redeemed by Jesus. I, he'll forgive me today and he'll forgive me again. Yes, he will forgive you, but he's saying, don't go back, don't go back to the vomit. Right. Get away from it. You shouldn't be back in it, in it. When Jesus said to the woman caught in adultery, he says, woman, where are thy accusers? The woman says, none are here, Lord. Then Jesus says, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. He didn't say, sin just a little less than what you did before. He says, try, try to do better next time. He didn't say those type of things. 
He says, go and sin no more. John 3, John 8, 3, 11, Matthew 20, 16 says, many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called because God makes his love, his power, and his anointing available to everyone. Yes. It's not just for us. It's for everyone. Mm. God is calling everyone to be born again and to be blessed by the power of his blood. He wants everyone to be saved and to live a life of blessing. For if the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. 2 Chronicles 16.9 But only a few respond to his call. Why is that? Few people become the chosen ones because most Christians do not obey the voice of God when God is calling them or speaking to them about an area of their lives. Sometimes they've got things in their life that's more important than what God says. Lord, I like the change. I want to do that. That's why he says many are called, but few are chosen. Because how are you going to change your life? Obedience. It's so very important that you be obedient to what God says. John 15, 14, Jesus says, You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Also in the same portion of Scripture, verses 15 and 16, He says, I no longer call you servants, for as servants don't know what his master is doing, but I call you friend. And he calls you friend because he lets you know what's going on. He tells you everything. God doesn't hide everything from you. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that the, your fruit shall remain, that whoever you ask in the Father's name, you may have. Whatever you ask in His name, He says, I'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't exaggerate. He says, if you obey me and be my friend, whatever you ask the Father, healing, finances, anointing, whatever it may be, He'll give it to you. And many Christians say, my prayers aren't getting answered. Maybe God can't answer your prayers because you're not obeying Him. We pray, and we pray, and we pray, but we don't get an answer. Obey Him. There's benefits in when you obey. There's benefits when you obey. It's just that simple. We make it difficult. We make it difficult. I've got friends that I, and I, I, I don't have many friends. I have acquaintance. I have a few friends. Because there's few, when I say a few friends, because I can't share everything with everybody. Because everybody is not, well, not, is not the person that's going to hold on to it. Because they'll take, who the person you think is a friend? Boy, I tell you what, two days later something goes wrong, they're gone. A friend will stand by you no matter what the circumstance yes. may be. Yes. Everybody's not your friend. That's so right. when I hear people say that sometimes, oh, oh, he's my friend. Well, he just cut you up in pieces. Hmm. And he's your friend? No, that's <laughs> not so. He's an acquaintance. So I, 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 don't, I don't have many friends. I got a lot of acquaintances. In the kingdom, everyone is a servant, from the queen down. If you belong to the kingdom, we have certain things we've got to do. This is why even Queen Esther, when she was going before her husband, on behalf of the Hebrew people, said, It might cost me my life, she says. Why? Because even as his wife, as his spouse, she still came under the king. And so she told the people, she said, What I'm going to say and what I'm going to do is going to be against the king. And if I go against the king, it may cost me my life. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Don't go against the king. Because it could cost you your life. Mm -hmm. Wow. Stop and think about that a little bit. It could cost you the life. But Jesus says, if you obey me, then you are friends. He speaks to us through the word, through, through sermons. I mean, sometimes sermons come through to you. So how do you take them? And through an inner voice, sometimes he speaks to you individually. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been riding down the road in your car or wherever you may be? It's like this morning with me in the bed. He was speaking to me while I was in bed. What are you doing? Sometimes God's speaking to you. The question is, do you know his voice? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know it's him that's speaking to you? Because when you recognize his voice and he's speaking to you, now you can be obedient to what he's asking you to do. Yes. And when you're obedient to him, my Lord, there's blessings that go along with it. Many times God speaks to us, and we don't even know it's God. We don't even know it's God. And he's trying to tell us things, trying to get us where he wants us to go. 
when we obey him and become his friend, that means we now have authority equal to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus told us in Matthew 18, 18, he says, whatever you bind on earth yes. will be bound in heaven. Mm -hmm. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's power. Yes. Yes. That's power. Yes. When he yes. tells you can do that, that's power. That's power. When Jesus was walking on with the disciples, he asked, do men know, uh, say who I am? Yes. And Peter responds, you are the Christ. You are the anointed one of God. In other words, you are the one we are to obey. Amen. Yes. And if you're obedient to him, man, man, what you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. What yes. you bound on earth will be loose. Wow, what power. <laughs> He's given it to us. It's up to us. What do you do with it? You are the one we are to follow. And Jesus responded to Peter and says, Now, Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth will be will, uh, will be will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose in earth will be loose in heaven. That's Matthew 16, 13, 16, 13 to 19. That's power. Because he recognized who Jesus was. Not every Christian has the keys to the kingdom. Oh. I hear people binding and loosening and loosening and binding and don't even know what you're saying and what they're doing. Every Christian does not have the keys. Keys represent authority. Amen. Being obedient to God, that's what's obedient. Why do you think this nation has such, such, such a powerful uh, military? Because they're obedient. They, the soldiers have learned to be obedient. When our downfall comes, if it ever comes, and I'm praying that it won't come, is that it's going to be a, because of disobedience. Mm. Keys represent authority. Every Christian has a right to the keys. But to be honest, Many of us go around binding and loosening, and nothing is bound and nothing is loosed. I believe that the reason is because the keys are not are, are, are not automatically given to people who are born again. The keys are only given to those whom God trusts. He knows uh, they, they will obey. God told Abraham his secrets because he knew that he would trust Abraham and that he would obey everything that God told him to do. When he was obedient, he says, oh yes, I can give it to him because he's obedient. And he also knew that Abraham would do one thing also. Abraham would teach it to his children, yes. and he would make sure his children and his children's children knew about who God was. Yes. We get to the point today, we don't want to tell our children about God. Mm. Mm. You know why? Because they might get angry. Oh. After all, they have to live their own life. <laughs> After all, I mean, I've already translated, he can do what he wants to do. No, when my son called me, we talk about the Lord. Amen. Yes. We may not always agree, but I'm telling you what the Word of God says. We had that discussion just the other day. Dad, what are we going to do about this abortion thing? I said, follow the Word of God. I can't all, I agree with the Word of God. I agree with this, but I believe we've got to do this. I said, son, my only base foundation is this. It's got to be on the Word of God. Amen. That's the only foundation I've got that I can hold on to. Yes. If I hold on to what the world is saying or what the government is saying, and I get concerned with that, the government is getting to the point where those things that are against the law is against the word of God. So we've got to be careful about the laws they pass. Because they don't necessarily go along with the word of God. So my, my, my foundation and my base for my life is, I've got to go on the word of God, son. But then where are we going to? Son, go on the word of God. Please go on the word of God. Well, Dad, I, I, I believe you and I know you're right, Dad, and I believe the word of God, but i got to see, see. All I can do is tell you, son. <laughs> All I could do is tell you, son. He's gonna hear this on his tape. Well, I tell you, Daddy, do you know all that about me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it's all about. But when he knows you'll obey him, when he knows, when God knows that you'll obey him, he'll give you the keys to heaven. Amen. I believe if I asked you, if you believe the word of God is true, I believe the majority of you would probably say yes. Mm -hmm. I believe you all would say yes. Yes. But it is one thing to believe in God. Yes. It's another thing to obey. Yes. Oh, my, yes. my, my. Mm. Everybody believes. Everybody here, even the devil believes his word. Yes. Mm. The, the, devil, the devil knows all about his word. Probably more so than we do. <laughs> Most of us know the Bible tells husbands to love their wives. And wives to obey their husbands. But divorce is higher among Christians than among non-Christians. Mm. We here have been taught the word of God that says to tithe and to give offerings. But when the offering plate passed past you, 
Did you obey God or did you rob God? That's the question. What did you do? The church is full of people who, who are saved, but the church is not full of people who are obeying God. That's why we're having so many issues in the world today. There's many people that are saved. There's many people hearing the word, but they're not being obedient to the word of God. And we wonder sometimes why we don't receive the blessings. Why can't I receive all the blessings? God has a multitude of blessings for every one of us. When he speaks to us in his still small voice, he will choose to say to obey or disobey. We have a choice. When God says, don't gossip, the devil can't come and grab your lips and make you say things, badly things about someone. If you're true, <laughs> it's our choice to obey God's command or not. When he says, stop the gossiping, you got to hear what God says. He says, stop the gossiping. What are you going to do with it? You're going to obey Him? To obey God is another key to overcoming anger. To getting your, uh, to getting your unsaved children saved. To having blessings uh, on your marriage. To receiving financial blessings. To having a wonderful relationship with God. When, when we obey, we go from being just called to being chosen. Yes. One of God's people. Amen. Amen. When we start obeying, we're not just called. We become one. Right. Yes. We wonder why we don't have the power. Is because God is trying to show us that we could have it, but it's up to us whether we want to keep it or not. Maybe one of the reasons we don't obey God is because we think He doesn't understand understand our situation. Oh Lord, He tells us to do something, and we say, and we say, but God, you know what I think? God don't care what you think. <laughs> our minds are not like His. Do we all even think God is up in heaven saying, you know, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> Why in your case is yours so different than anybody else's? No, it isn't different. It is the same for each one of us. We are to obey Him no matter what we think or how we feel. In today's society, people are trained to be highly opinionated and independent thinkers. That is why so many people have a hard time having faith. Mm -hmm. They're too opinionated, they got their own ideas. They got their own thoughts. This is the way I think it should be. God should be listening to me rather than me listening to God. Because God just don't understand. How many of us thought that way? How many of us have thought that way? I know better. I, I may have gone through a stage of that, but I tell you, I'm way beyond that stage now. Because I take on what he says. Some don't know it will be God because they think he has a hard, he's a hard taskmaster. But he is a good God. He is not a taker, he is a giver. In John 10, 10, he has promised uh, his life, and more abundantly he'll give us his life. He's trying to give it all to us. It's up to us what we want to do. We have to be obedient to what God is saying. Yeah. If you're not obedient, oh, I've got to take you to another scripture. Let's go to the scripture, and we're going to close it. I've got to read this one scripture to you. Go back to Deuteronomy again. And this time, go to, uh, I want to go to 28. And hit, hit uh, verse number 15. i got, I got to read this to you. I'm going to read a few verses from 15 to 20. Because being obedient, we have so many blessings. God says, He owns so much He wants to give you. He says, just be obedient to me. If I can trust you, I can give it to you. As a child, as I was growing up, the more, the more my daddy trusted me, the more, I mean... Even as a 13-year-old kid, my father trusted me enough to go out and buy me a car at 13 because I was obedient. He, he trusted me so that he, he even gave me a, a, I could go down to the gas station and put gas in my car. And all I had to do was sign my name. And Daddy took care of it once a month. He'd go down because he knew that I wouldn't abuse what he was giving to me. I had to, I had to show him that he could trust me. And because of that, there was, no, there was, no, there was nothing my father wouldn't give for me. My dad says, son, I think we ought to. All he had to do was say, son, I thought. And when I, when I knew what dad wanted, man, I was jumping around trying to get it done for him. And because of that, there's nothing that he wouldn't get from me. That's how much my dad gave me. Now, I had another brother oh, that wasn't exactly that way. <laughs> he questioned dad. Oh, my. Dad would say, son, I want you to do whatever you tell him to do. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Ooh, don't say that to Jerry Burton. Ooh, Lord. 
There was yeah, all that left handed joker. He hit that boy so hard, knocked him through the patio door, the screen door, knocked him, the screen door, knocked him up the step. You don't ever talk to me like that, boy. I'm your daddy. I, I think he was like Cosby. I brought you in, I'll take you out. My mama was saying to me, when the boy will stop your dad before he kills him? He's going to kill him. He's going to kill him. Get up there and stop him. That boy don't talk back to your dad. And you know, God, God, God is no joke either. God is no joke either. Let's go to 28.15. Let's look what it says. He says, but if you will not obey the voice of the Lord, your God, or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Curse shall be in the city, and curse shall be in the field. Curse shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Curse shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of the ground, the increase of your herds and the, and the young of your flock. Curse, uh, curse you shall be when you go come in, and curse will you be when you go out. The Lord will send you, who send on you curses, confusion, frustration, and all that you undertake to do until you are destroyed and perished quickly on account of the evil of your deed because you have forsaken me. Obey God. You don't want that kind of stuff to come upon you. That's just a little bit of it. Read the rest of the chapter. I'm not going to read the rest of it. Keep that, keep, put a marker in there. Put a marker in your Bible right on Deuteronomy right there, 28. Starting with verse number 15. And start reading that for yourself. It'll make you want to be obedient. It'll make you do what God wants you to do. It'll make you try to act right and be right. I know my daddy made me feel that way. Because I knew the consequences. I knew the consequences. He made everything available for me. Son, you don't have to steal because of your dad. Because I am your dad. When you look to God, God says, you don't have to do that because I'm your father. Amen. God says, whatever you need to do, you don't need to do all the time. I'm, I'm, your, I'm, I'm, I'm God your father. He said, I got everything for you. He said, I own it all. So whatever you need, just ask me. You don't have to, you don't have to steal to get it. Just ask me, and I'll give it to you. I want you to have whatever you need, whatever you desire. Don't commit adultery because I've got a wife for you. Amen. You don't have to do that. Hmm. I'll give you a wife. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Whatever you need, God said, I'll give it to you. God tells us to obey Him because He always has good things in store for us. I believe that. There's always good things for us. God tells us to obey Him because He always has good things. Commandments are uh, not there to limit us, but to release us into the full blessing of our Heavenly Father. Restrictions are for a reason. It takes my wife to share about this individual. We know we were in, uh, when we were in Aberdeen, Maryland. This little boy that parents was trying to give him directions and he didn't want to listen. Dad, his mama told him, he said, son, you need to get out that car. No. Ooh. She's coming to try to get him out the car. He kicked at her. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. After a while, he was messing around in the car and knocked, knocked the, uh, the car out of gear. At that time, you didn't have to have the brakes on the car. You know that you, now you've got to push your brake in and put it in gear. There you didn't have to. You get a skid that would fall into gear. And that's what happened. He knocked it out of gear. The car started rolling down the hill. Mm -hmm. Now she's standing there screaming. Well, he wasn't obedient to her. And so here's the consequences. So to me, I'm happy to be around somewhere, you know, and I see what's going on. So I, I run down, I jump in the car, and I stop the car, you know. And then she gets her kid out the car, and she said, If you don't do that again, I'll buy you some ice cream. Mm -hmm. I said, Kick her again. No, no, I think that's what I was thinking. I was, I, 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 I was just thinking that. I, <laughs> but obedience is there for a reason. God has a God has rules for us. God has things for us for one reason. It's because He loves us and He wants to protect us. It's up to us what we do with it. He's only telling you that because He wants to protect us. But if we let go of them and trust God and obey God. He will give me much more than I could ever possibly dream of. That's who he is. We don't have to be perfect in, 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 uh, 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 or without mistakes. Yeah, we make mistakes. I do that. But our hearts need to be, be surrendered and pliable to God. 
We have to get rid of that heart, that heart of stone and get a heart of flesh. It's got to be pliable that God can touch us. We need to be moving forward in the things of God every day in our lives. You know God's word? Go for it. You know God's word? Live it. You read God's word? Live by it. You come to church? I try to give you some more words on God. Go for it. Today's de decision determines your tomorrow. Whatever you decide to do today, that's what's going to affect you tomorrow. So I'm saying to you, this is where it's at. There is a miracle on the other side of your obedience. This, that's very powerful. There is a miracle on the other yes. side of your obedience. Sometimes you don't see the miracle. I do. I learned that from my father. I, I guess I keep going back to my father because I know the type of man that he was. And my life today is a reflection of who my father was. Didn't always agree with him. But this is the miracle that I live in today. And the miracle you can live in today also because being obedient to what God's telling you to do. Because the day is going to come when we're going to pass on this earth. And we're going to, we're going to have to greet him again. We're going to have to meet him again. And he'll open up the book of life and he's going to say, Well done, my faithful servant. Well done. Are you going to be able to hear that? It's be, that's going to be the obedience. That's going to be the miracle. That's going to be the joy of being obedient to God's word. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Be obedient Amen. to God's word. There is a blessing for that. There is a blessing.